Hi everyone, this is Matteo Otwi with Boxy Construction and US Frame Factory. Today I'm going to uh, lead a tutorial on how to use AgaCAD to frame simple walls. And um, we'll be doing this in Revit. AgaCAD's a plugin that helps you detail walls and create wall panels, wall drawings, and also helps you detail roofs and floors as well. But today we'll be concentrating on the wall panels. So let's dive right in. And this tutorial, we do not show you how to install um, AgaCAD or do anything like that. We just show you how to use it to create walls and how to edit those walls. We have this Cajun building here that we're going to uh, try to frame the walls of in this um, tutorial. So first thing you want to do is, um, when working with AgaCAD, and I'll pop this back up there, is um, take a wall out. So select a wall and hit CS on your keyboard, drag it out, give yourself a little bit of room. And then I have a second interior partition wall in there as well, a little bit thinner. And now we'll go look at our walls and we'll select 10 foot um, just so that you can see everything. Okay, so now we have these two test walls and it's helpful to have a test wall just so that you can um, see how it's going to be framed. I'll go ahead and plop a window into them as well so that you can see how the software frames around the windows. So um, AgaCAD, once you have it installed and uh, you have the wall panel system installed as well, you can pull it out of the dashboard up here. Um, it's going to be in the T4R metal framing. And you can see all the different options here. When you start a new project, you always go into settings and you load your families uh, if they're not already loaded or if you didn't start from a templated project. And you can hit OK and that'll load your families. And once those families are loaded, they're going to appear in your project browser inside the families, inside the structural framing, and then you've got all your different components that could go into um, your wall, like your studs, your joists, your track, blocking, strapping, things like that. So once you've done that, uh, the next thing we'll want to do is figure out what kind of wall we want it to be. So you can hit this drop down here and select framing configuration, and you'll see how the walls are defined. And if you go look at these different walls, they're all defined in different ways. Um, we'll just use um, C plus U blocking and C plus U lateral bracing. I think those are some of the defaults that come with AgaCAD. But we'll also show you how to edit those today. Um, so lateral bracing, we'll start with that one. We'll just close it out. And we'll hit link wall right here. And this links these um, these wall definitions with the actual walls in Revit. So here we have the structure. You can see everything that we were looking at earlier in that seven and a quarter inch wall. And then we can select, um, and if, if it's none right now, you can just select one uh, lateral bracing is good. And then we can also go to our um, four and seven eighths inch partition and also select lateral bracing, or we'll select blocking to see the difference, and hit OK. And then, uh, very simply, we just click on our walls. You can click on, hit Control and select both of them, and select frame wall. And the software will do its thing and calculate uh, all the parts and pieces that need to go into these walls. All right, and you can see uh, some of it popped up already. Now, the best way to work is to typically, uh, what I like to do is, um, I like to copy my, duplicate my 3D view, and then rename it Framing 3D, or something like that. And you can hit the letters VG on your keyboard and that'll bring up your visibility and graphics and then just go down to walls and hit transparency override 
and max out that transparency, hit OK. And so now all of our walls are, you can still see the lines for the walls, but and you can still select them, but they don't, uh, they don't prevent you from seeing through. So we can see um, this is one of AgaCAD's presets, and you can see how it's framed up these walls. So that's pretty dandy. Um, let's zoom in and see how it's done the header here. Um, yeah, so it looks like there's just a, just a piece of track in there. We can also, we can also use the keyboard shortcut EH to hide the window. And so, yep, we just have a piece of track. We can also turn on, um, hidden line. Well, that doesn't really... Well, let's see. Consistent colors help sometimes um, just to get an idea of the lines. So yeah, we can see track members and, and they've already predefined it and they've already got the six inch track in there. They've got six inch stud members. Um, over here they have the, the equivalent three and five eighths. And they spec'd it out for a different gauge as well. So it's a pretty quick and easy system. Now let's actually dive in and see what's happening. So in the framing configuration, let's open that up and we have our blocking and our lateral bracing. So let's take a look at the settings that are being used here. So material class deal, frame, doesn't matter so much, configuration name, you can name it whatever you want. Um, but typically it's something descriptive. So the common settings are what they sound like. What are the main type of studs? What are the main type of tracks? Um, modify configuration and settings. There's some information in here about how um, the studs are initially placed. Now openings are initially done. Um, minimum stud joist length, cripple lengths, etc. Minimum opening sizes. So that has some configuration settings for common settings. This is a really helpful menu that shows you what all their uh, all their letterings mean. We'll see what we'll see why this is handy in a moment. Like they'll name things for you like the top plate side studs, a regular stud, a king stud, a trimmer, top trimmer, cripples. So they'll label those for you because they know what they are. And then you can modify other settings here. And you can, you can select to make visible certain items in this. So those are your common settings. Um, there's a lot in there. There's a lot you can configure. So you can see for wall framing, this is where you actually can change the stud spacing. And you can set you want you can set if you want the spacing to be inch and a quarter for the first one or for the last or for both stud in the center. So you can have it start 16 on center from the center of the wall. And then this is where you can play around with the actual size of the stud that's going to be used. And you can define, like, if you wanted it rotated or flipped the other way. Uh, this is one, one area where you can change it. You can define your top plate. Uh, and even though they show it as a C here, they actually mean to show it as, this is just their, how they donate, uh, this is how they indicate the stud direction, and this is interior and exterior. Just like this is interior, exterior, like you're looking down the wall. Bottom plate, interior, exterior, same, pretty much the same. It's a track member. You can select, you see from this drop down, you can select the whole range of other gauges, other um, sizes, and you can even go, and I'll show you later to how to change the um, 
the actual height of the, the parts of the stud or track. And um, this is just something that deals with tolerances. So then what, what can be really helpful is opening framing, there's door framing, there's uh, windows. And to actually edit these configurations, you hit edit configurations, and then you can edit, and they have a few different options already. And, and right now we're just looking at the king stud for, for a window, but these are different types of headers. Like this one has um, track and a stud and track. This one is, a, um, and you can look at our blog post on the different types of headers. This is a, a header with a back-to-back -back C, whereas um, this is just a single piece of track for a header. And this is just a single piece of stud. And, and we've done it before where um, there's uh, box beam headers inside of here. So it's, it's really flexible. You can actually go change the studs and, and see how they work. Um, you can redefine a lot of things here. The sill, the trimmers, the cripples. Um, So a lot of customizability for how you do openings. And then you can select different kinds of openings for different widths. So whatever your engineer has spec'd out. And then you can look at how it frames L connections. So right now it's using a, what I believe is a California corner. We also have a blog post about this that I'll link below if you're interested. Um, so this is how they do inner corners, outer corners. can look at how walls are ended, V connections, so any kind of angle, how, how, is the, how are they doing the angle, T connections, um, so T connection is where any wall intersects another connection. Unfortunately, a wall, and, and this is the receiving side, the butt connection. Unfortunately, a wall, um, there's no four-way intersection, and really the best way to do it is to split a wall and just frame it on both sides. And I've had issues with that before as well, but there's, there's workarounds. Here's a, um, just some ways that you change uh, some other settings. Um, I haven't messed around with ridge stud too much, but uh, I think that's the stud that um, that defines and how it defines um, the top uh, the top point and things like that of a of a wall blocking noggin that defines so so this is like the lateral strapping things like that lateral bracing um, you can see it in our that that's defined here, and you can see this one's offset by four feet from the bottom, and then every four feet, and the, there's two of them, and, and that's what you see in our drawings here. So, for example, if we switch to blocking, and we select the blocking, we don't have that same thing. We just have um, one here. We have straps on each side and I'll, I'll close out and show you that so that's that's defining every so many cell stu cells between each stud it's gonna put a um, it's gonna put a, a member in there like this a blocking stud and like I was saying earlier it'll set the height for this and you can even have it cut out the the holes for these um, either in the software after or you can show it in in the model as well 
and I even cut some little service holes uh, for running electrical wires and things like that and and you can um, you can have it stop at your windows as well so that it doesn't cut cut those out um, so looking at our framing configuration that's blocking a noggin really just any other things that you might want to have in your drawings so you can add secondary studs but we don't use that too much you can use um, X bracings uh, different kinds of bracing I'm not sure if I can't remember if the brace has an effect on the blocking so I'll have to get back to you about that but but um and then there's stud holes so that's that's kind of those service holes and you can even uncheck that and and I'll show you what that looks like um so if we, we click this one and we delete the frame so now our frame will disappear and we can reframe it and look all our service holes disappeared and um, but there's also other ways that you can modify you can add uh, elements to it you can also number the walls but let's uh, click on a component in here so something like the track and take a look see it's already labeled it as a top plate giving it that that value and and actually you can select um, if you select it and you hit let's number our walls um, so now I believe all of our walls are numbered so like that w2 so if you're in a annotating it in a drawing you can easily label your walls now using that wall uh, numbering tool and you just have to change this and make it Uh, let's edit that family and we can change it to show you can change it to show mark I will load it into that same project and there we go so now it's showing that wall labeled as W2 uh, so it's very helpful for um, creating details and drawings so once we've done that let's just now we've labeled the walls and so then we can go number our elements And now when we go click on a uh, given stud, it should say, look, it's part of wall 12. And it's a framing member VS. And so like I was saying earlier, that's in your framing configuration. So when you go look at your element mark definition, VS is your vertical stud. So that is the basics of how you use AgaCAD. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we will have more tutorials over time as we show how to frame out the building and um, edit details, align studs, and different things like that. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe, and if you're interested in specific tutorials, please comment below, and we'll uh, look into doing that kind of tutorial. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.